Candidates for public office, community leaders and residents hold a say no to the city of Yes joint press conference denouncing the radical rezoning proposal by Mayor Eric Adams. Please watch a special report. It's from Michael O'Reilly to Dwayne Moore to Yatin Chu to Paul King for coming out and advocating for Southeast Queens and our community. We want to save our homes, we want to save our neighborhoods. And without further ado, our special guest today, uh, here to join us in support, is Curtis Lewa. Curtis? Thank you. Uh, Curtis Lewa, founder of the Guardian Angels, WABC talk show host, mayoral candidate against Eric Adams, swagger man with no plan, and soon to be his foe, if he's still around or whatever Democrat, happens to win their democratic process because this destruction of the outer boroughs is being done to the benefit of the developers who wine, dine, and pocket line these crooked politicians. You should see every weekend in the Hamptons where they have strict zoning. They don't allow high rises because of the equity there. And yet the developers are inviting these elected officials and government officials, and they're getting wine dined and pocket lined. Manhattan is Manhattan. We don't need Manhattan in the Bronx. We don't need Manhattan in Queens, in Brooklyn, in Staten Island. I'm a son of the soil. I grew up in Canarsie. I'm 70 years old. In 1960, I was six years old. As you know, Canarsie is a residential area, as Southeast Queens is here. And yet, they say there's not enough housing. Really? I seem to remember in 1960, it was 8.1 million people in New York City. In 2024, there is 8.2 million people. What's the difference? Between then and now, we've had 175,000 units of housing built. Just look at Northern Queens all along Long Island City. All those towers of apartments were never there. Those were empty warehouses. So there's been an addition of apartments. The realtors and the developers have warehoused apartments until they get what they call fair market rate. They should be forced to reveal how many of those apartments are not being put up on the marketplace. There's more housing than there was when I was a kid. Imagine, 8.1 million in 1960, 8.2 million now, and they're screaming there's not enough apartments, not enough housing. How could that be? There was plenty of housing in 1960. The difference is the greedy developers and realtors have warehoused apartments. And now what they want to do is they want to come in with a bulldozer and destroy the American dream. The American dream for my parents was to own their own home, to have a little backyard, to have a little front yard. Not that much. We're not talking to Ponderosa. The American dream, first generation immigrants. The whole family would work, sometimes two, three jobs. Why? So they could have their own house. And who wants to destroy it? Eric Adams and his cronies in City Hall with the aid and abetment of the developers and the realtors who care. They don't care about the outer boroughs. Do you really think they care about the outer boroughs? They think of the outer boroughs as a place they can put up high-rise apartments and, like in third world countries, ground floor retail, second floor retail, third floor retail. If you've been to a third world country, that's what you see. And they'll have smoke shops and weed shops and bodegas up to the third floor. That's crazy. That's crazy. They will destroy the residential nature of our city. You go to Canarsie now, down the Bell Parkway, exit 13, the complexion of the community has changed from what were Jews and Italians to West Indians and African Americans. But the dream remains the same, to own your own home, with a backyard, with a front yard, send your kids to a public school. Many of them are civil servants. They work for the city. They work for the state. They've shed their blood in tears. And so some rich fat cat developers who love certain politicians can have their way, no, over my dead body. 
My parents are buried in Queens. They live the American dream. My grandparents live the American dream. They had their own home. They're not going to take away this rite of passage for Americans. I remember in 1994, I was in Moscow. I walked the streets of Moscow looking for one single home, a single family home, a two family home. None, all block houses, 10 stories, 12 stories, all the same. I don't know about you. I was birthed here. I will die here. I will fight for the legacy of my parents and grandparents, which is the legacy and grandparents for all of you. So if we are here to coalesce support and we come together with Democrats and people with common sense, so be it. The war is on. The battle is on. We keep the bulldozers out. We keep the developers out. And if they want to go to the Hamptons and develop where they wine, dine, and parking line our politicians, so be it. Thanks for having me here today. It's not the first time I've ever been here. It won't be the last time I've ever been there. And Eric Adams, swagger man with no plan, who's come with the wrecking ball, I'm coming after you because you're trying to destroy these great neighborhoods. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Yatin Chu. I'm a homeowner, a public school parent, and a candidate for State Senate District 11. This press conference is necessary because too few of our constituents know about the mayor's disastrous City of Yes rezoning plan to let developers build, build, build at the expense of our communities. Generations of families have put down roots in our neighborhoods. We continue to attract hardworking New Yorkers to our part of the city for the American dream, owning a one-family home with a little privacy, green space, away from the dense hustle and bustle of areas like Manhattan and even downtown Flushing. We are outraged at the mayor's one-size-fits-all zoning proposal that would drastically change our neighborhoods for the worse. Families pour their life savings into their homes. It's often a nest egg for retirement and maybe something to pass down to our children. Not only will the city of Yes jeopardize property values, but most pressing is how the ill-conceived plan will degrade our quality of life. City of Yes eliminates all parking requirements for residential housing. We are already stressed with the lack of parking on our residential streets. Out here, we rely on buses and the LIR stations, which still requires the use of our cars to get to these stations. The crazy talk of not requiring parking is more about profits for developers at the expense of our quality of life. We oppose the dangerous legalization of ADUs, basement apartments and flood zones, garage conversions and backyard houses. Yes, there are already legal ones. Legalizing them will be a free for all. Expect dangerous ADUs to proliferate. To support multi-unit apartment buildings on the same size as two one-family homes, we need major investments in sewer lines, electrical capacity, road work, schools, and more. With Albany's new class size law, we cannot even accommodate kids in our local schools today. How will we support more families moving in? Over the weekend, the mayor and the city council agreed on a budget that's $6 billion more than last year. Yet, there were no provisions for infrastructure or essential services like additional police precincts or fire stations. I will continue to speak out, fight for our communities, and protect our neighborhoods from edicts from City Hall and Albany. The mayor's city of yes, like Governor Hochul's housing compact last year, aims to take away our right to decide what's good our, for our community. We cannot let that happen. Thank you. My name is Michael O'Reilly. I am running for state senate right here in this beautiful district, in this beautiful neighborhood. And I do stand against the city of no. I don't know what my opponent's position is on this. I don't think he's formulated one yet, but I'm against it. Now, let's be clear. This whole city of yes notion came about 
when Mayor Adams realized that we have a housing shortage. So he realizes we have a housing shortage. On the other hand, he entices tens of thousands of people to come up and make our community their new home. Tens of thousands of illegal aliens to come up here and make our community their new home. So I have a proposal. I suggest instead of throwing all of these mandates out the window, which were so critically important before this, let's throw the city of yes out the window. Thank you very much, Michael O'Reilly, State Senator. My name is Dwayne Moore, and I'm running for New York State Assembly in District 29. And we're here to address the city of yes. And this is very personal to me because we're standing in the community that I literally was raised in. And this proposal is dangerous because it literally will destroy our neighborhood. These proposals to eliminate the single family and two family zoning would lead way to large developments. And people move in this neighborhood so they can raise families away from the congestion. Now, we've asked the city to fix the roads. We've asked the city to fix the flooding. We've asked the city for better schools, but yet they have no plan for that. But as soon as they see a money grab to make more money and sell us out, then they create this plan that nobody asked for. Who would want our neighborhood to be more congested? If a house across the street was to get knocked down, they'd be able to build a 16 unit apartment with no parking mandate, with no studies done to improve the schools for the upgraded density that we'll be having. There's no plan to improve the sewage, the, the flooding, but yet they're trying to cram this down our throat. Why? But what is the purpose behind this? I think some people feel that this might be corrupt. We didn't ask for this, and almost every community board has voted against it. So I'm advocating to turn the city of yes to the city of hell no, because we deserve more, New York deserves more, and we need to end politicians selling us out for large developments. Thank you so much. My name is Paul King. I'm the Republican candidate for Congress in New York 5, which includes Rosedale right here. I'm also a member of Queens Community Board 14, which voted overwhelmingly to reject city of yes housing opportunity. Now let's face it, more than any other place in America, Queens, New York represents the American dream. And whether your family's been here for generations or whether you're uh, first generation or whether you're legal immigrants, you've come here and we all start the same way. Stand by your constituents. Don't tinker with the deck chairs of the Titanic. Turn the ship around. Bring the housing plan back to the drawing board. Come back to us when you have something that makes sense and something that'll work. Because if these elected representatives choose to stand with the developers, it'll spell doom for the American dream in Queens and New York City. We cannot let that happen. Thank you.